is a continuation of my introduction to AutoCAD interface. In this video, we will talk about how to draw a basic line, navigate around a drawing, and get used to the interface in a little bit more tangible way. First, if you're continuing from the previous video, make sure you're not still editing your template file. See up at the top it says drawing 3 dwg because I'm in kind of an empty generic CAD file. If it still says your template file up there, such as jeremy.dwt, then you'd want to just close that and hit new, which is the white square uh, icon at the upper left corner. And then you'll have an empty clean CAD file that you can start to play around with. Okay, so now what do we do? We have this big empty drawing space. So how do we start drawing something? This is the fun part, right? So first, let's turn off all the drawing aids at the bottom left, because I want to kind of start with a clean template, so to speak. Now, we talked a little bit before about starting a command at the command prompt. You also obviously have all these icons at the top. And so as you start drawing, you might be tempted to go up and say, you know, there's the line command, circle command, you know, move command, etc. A lot of those you can kind of figure out based upon the icons and the names. And obviously, if you hover over an icon, it will show you the name of the command. Now, you always have the option to access commands in multiple ways. You have the tools at the top, and you have the command line at the bottom. So, what's the best way? Well, most of the time, if you want to be um, kind of a more efficient drafts person over the long haul, it's going to be beneficial to you to learn your keyboard shortcuts. Like when we did options, we typed OP rather than going up to the pull down. So that's going to be true for most of your basic commands. When we draw a line, we can type at the command prompt or we can hit the icon. But if you're a decent typer, or even if you're not, maybe you'll learn to become one, I can hit L for line, and then space. Again, space or enter are the same thing. Now I've started the line command. So the alternative, again, would be to click on the line icon up in my ribbon. But what that requires is it requires your eyes to move up to the ribbon in order to find the tool. On the other hand, I can type L space without really taking my eyes off the drawing area because I'm a pretty good typer. So in the long run, that's going to be faster for me. Again, if you're not a great typer, then your eyes are going to be going down to the keyboard, so there may not be a big difference now. But if you use the keyboard enough, you'll start to learn where the keys are, and then you won't have to look down for them anymore. Okay, so we started the command with L space, L for line. Now, the command line is going to be your friend. See, it says specify first point. AutoCAD is waiting to know where do you want to start the line. So you can click your mouse, and now you've started the line. Whenever I say click, that generally means with the left mouse button, unless I see otherwise. On the other hand, if you're left-handed and you've reversed the mouse buttons in Windows, then everything would be backwards. So most of the time, when I say click, that means left click. Otherwise, I'll say right-click if that's what you need to do. All right, so the basic idea of drawing a line is you click any two points. So go ahead and click your mouse with another point. Now you've drawn your first line. Now, if you look at the command line again, you can see that it still says specify next point. The command line will stay active as long as you want to keep drawing. So I can click more points. Go ahead and uh, click some more points around your drawing window. Now I have lines all over the place. That's the basic idea of drawing a line. You're giving it a start point and you're giving it an end point. Obviously right now I'm not being precise or accurate, but we're just kind of playing around and then we'll go over being precise in a few minutes. So how do we get out of drawing lines? Well, you have a few options. First, the escape key on your keyboard at the upper left corner will always get you out of any command or anything that you're doing in order to kind of reset AutoCAD back to its normal state of being ready to do something new. So escape will always get you out of anything. Sometimes you have to hit it more than once. 
It never hurts to hit it more than once, so if you just hit escape a couple times, then you'll be back to normal. The other option, if there's no additional steps in the command, is space or enter or right click. That was one of the settings that we changed as far as what right click does. In this case, those three, space, enter, or right click, generally move you to the next step. In the line command, there is no other next step. So in the, instead of moving on, it just takes you out and gets you back to being ready to do something new. So now you can see the very bottom row says command colon. By command colon, that means it's ready for you to do another command or a different command or whatever you want to do. So that's the basic idea of how the command input works. Type something, follow the steps down there, and then when you're done, you can hit escape. Some commands require three or four or more steps. So then you'll be hitting space or enter or right click in order to move on from one step to the next. Now that we have a few lines, take your mouse wheel. I'm assuming that you have a normal mouse um, and not like a laptop glide point or a trackball. You can do CAD with those, but they're much more difficult because you don't have that scroll wheel. So scroll that wheel up and down a little. You'll see your lines appear to get smaller and larger. Well, you're basically zooming in and out when you scroll that mouse wheel. Now, if that doesn't work for you on your mouse wheel, then that may mean that your mouse wheel has been reprogrammed to do other things. So then you have to reset those settings in Windows. But normally the mouse wheel is a very easy way to zoom in and out. Again, your objects are not changing size. It's more about, um, you know, you have like a digital camera. Um, most of you have probably used one before. You can zoom in to make things look closer, or zoom out to make things look farther to fit in more people into your photo, etc. So that's basically what you're doing now when you're zooming in and out. Now, the other thing you're going to want to do a lot of times is to kind of walk your way across a drawing, and that's called pan. If you hold down that middle scroll wheel, then you'll see your icon changes, or your cursor changes to a hand. Now, move the hand left or right, and it's kind of like you're sliding the paper across the table almost, right? The drawing's moving by. So that's very handy when you're zoomed in close and you want to get to the other end of a drawing. You don't have to zoom all the way out. You can pan your way across and then zoom in a little more if you need. So that's an easy way to navigate back and forth, up, down, left, right, whichever way you need. So again, the scroll wheel makes AutoCAD much easier to navigate. Now, a few other pointers about lines. Select one of your lines by clicking on it with the mouse. When I say that, I'm assuming you do not have another command active, so you've hit escape in order to get out of the line command. So when you select that line, you see these blue squares show up. These are called grips, G-R-I-P-S, grips. If you click on one of the grips at the end of the line, you'll see that you can manipulate the line's length and angle very easily. If you click on the grip at the midpoint of the line, you can move the entire line. Now, when I say click, and don't hold down the left mouse button. You're just clicking and releasing in order to grab the grip, kind of like you're picking up something off of the table. Click and release, and then when you find the spot where you want to put the grip, you click and release again. There's very, very rarely a time in AutoCAD that you want to hold down the left or right mouse buttons. Really, almost never. So click and release, and then click and release to drop the grip. Now, if you want to delete a line, you have it selected already because it's highlighted and it's got the blue squares. You press delete on the keyboard. Select a line, delete on the keyboard. You can select more than one. You don't need to hold anything down on the keyboard like in some other programs. You just continue to select lines by clicking on them and then delete on the keyboard and they're gone. What if you have a lot of lines and you need to delete all of them? I'm going to draw a few lines more here now that I deleted so many. 
you could click on them all, but what if there's a hundred lines? That's very tedious. If you do not have a command active, and then you move up and away from the lines, like up and to the left, and now click your mouse off in space outside of where the lines are, and then move your mouse cursor across the lines. If you move your mouse toward the right, you'll see that you're kind of getting this blue box. It's an easy way to select many objects at once. Now, before I click my mouse, the second point, because I would have to in order to select those objects, you can also move your mouse to the left and you see the box becomes green. So we're gonna talk about that in a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the selection window. So I'll click my second point. Again, I'm not holding down the mouse button. I clicked one point above and to the left, and then I went across the lines and clicked the second point. Now I can press delete and all those lines go away very quickly. Now if you screw up, remember there's undo icon at the very top, that little arrow. Now my lines are back. Your standard window shortcut of control Z also will work for that. Now I said the green box is a little different. So what's the difference? The blue box or selection window will only select lines completely enclosed. So if you look at my window now, there's a couple lines that are not going to get selected. See, it only grabbed two or three, two I guess, because all the other lines were sticking out of the box. A blue box only selects lines completely enclosed within the blue area. Now a green box, on the other hand, will select anything that even remotely touches the green box. It's a very important distinction. A green box is called a crossing window. So why is this important? Because a lot of times you're going to have a really complicated drawing and you may need to select um, 50 lines out of 150 lines that are totally in the drawing. So how do you go about selecting those exact 50? Well, sometimes it's easier to go from right to left and do a green window, and sometimes it's easier to go from left to right, depending on what you need to do. So you kind of just keep that in the back of your mind, and when the time comes up, it'll be obvious maybe this is a good time to do that. Okay, so now I could delete them, or later we'll get to other modify commands. You can copy, rotate, scale, or whatever else you need to do with them. If you want to unselect lines, like I want to just reset and go back to normal, I can hit escape. Now the lines are not highlighted anymore. If I have all these lines selected and then I change my mind and I don't want to delete all of them, there's one that I want to keep. I can hold the shift key and pick, you know, and unselect one or more lines. So holding shift will unselect and now I can delete everything else and so those ones still remain. So shift is the opposite of selecting. 